From Mammoth Mountain, California, it's the Reebok Eliminator. Brought to you by Reebok, who reminds you that on planet Reebok, there are no limits. And presented to you by Mountain Dew. We're standing on top of the world here at Mammoth Mountain, but things are going downhill fast all around us. Hello, everybody. I'm Brian Drever. 11,000 feet in the Sierra Nevadas in the middle of summertime, but there's still snow on the ground. Clouds passing by are making things kind of interesting. And the second annual Reebok Eliminator is underway. Working with me, the man who is a current national cross-country champion, Hall of Famer and world champion, holds the course record on this kamikaze, but going the wrong way. Ned, let's talk about that course. Brian, the main difference this year is that the course has been coated with pine tar. That makes the course much faster, but it also creates a specific groove which makes it harder to pass. That's going to make the start crucial. We have our defending women's champion, Missy Giovi, with us. She's favored on the women's side, but the men's champion, Dave Cullinan, is out of the race. Dave's down with the flu, and that leaves the men's race wide open. I think we've got a favor, Jimmy Deaton, who's got the fastest time on this course and won the qualifier yesterday. His teammate, Miles Rockwell, was second. He's also very quick. We've got Brian Lopes, who is a uh, BMX champion who's used to dicing it out with uh, other guys at high speed, so he's going to be a guy to watch. And then all the Europeans are really going to put an unknown factor in it. Well, we're going to show you some action right now from the preliminary rounds. As an early morning fog hung over the top of Mammoth Mountain, 32 men took to the course two by two. Racers were called to the gate and released into what must have seemed like the abyss. They were led by top seed Jimmy Deaton, who had earned his spot by winning the Kamikaze downhill time trial the day before. The course, however, gave him pause for concern. This year they've put down a uh, some like tree sap on the course and they made it, you know, harder and faster and a little slippery when you get off the, the main groove. The international riders came up with a few surprises. Nice guy Tom Rogers drew Yoshiro Yanagahara and learned how to say eliminated in Japanese. Eric the Giant Killer Palmquist took an early advantage over Mike Bohannon, but fell victim to Mammoth's slippery terrain. And Germany's Jürgen Benke came from behind to beat the 1991 world downhill champ Albert Eaton, and then finished off Mike Boom Boom Bohannon himself. Italy's Stefano Migliorini watched from behind as USA's Danny Martinez fell victim to the mountain. Down in a heap. Then in the second heat, they played bumper cars. Stefano advancing to the next round. BMXer Brian Lopes matched up next against Madman Miglarini. Last time he drafted me all the way down the hill and didn't pass me until right before, right this long straightaway, right before the last couple corners. He did the same thing this time. He got in there and I was surprised because I thought I could out sprint him. But he was too much. He was going too fast in the turn, because and he just slid. Lopes took advantage of the slipping and sliding and advanced. And here we go for another one. Casey Kunzelman, number five, a top eight finisher a year ago, went no further than the round of 16 this time. A victim of newcomer Toby Henderson's flat-out style. Miles Power saw Rockwell into the Japanese bid. He said sayonara, demolishing Yanagihara in the second round. Upsets were again the order of the day. Wheel problems plagued number one seed Jimmy Deaton, preventing him from making the start time. And at the eliminator, time waits for no one. He was scratched from the leaderboard when he left way late out of the gate against Englishman Jason McCroy. And it's funny, this round I'm going against my rival, Jake Watson. I met him in round of four last year. He let me win. I didn't let you win. Maybe let me win now again, huh? A big second round pairing, a rematch of last year's semi-final. Runner-up Bernhard and Hasse Biscay against crowd favorite Jake Watson. But Jake was too hot to handle this year for Bernie U. They fought down the hill, nip and tuck. Earthquake Jake too much with his fan club in full force. Now hang on, because when we come back, Ned Overin takes you for the ride of your life.
This is the finish of the Kamikaze course that gives these riders a lifetime's worth of thrills. Now, Ned Oberon's going to give us a top to bottom look, wheeling down the hill. On top of the mountain, jamming out of the chute, we want to jump into the lead so we can pick the fastest line through the first turn. It's high speed and off camber. A lot of exposure on our right. We blow it here, we could take a thousand foot dive. This hard packed groove is the fast line. Tight left hander. Grab the brakes, take your left foot out for stability, then explode down the straightaway. At Froggy's turn, we want the inside line. Too wide, and we scrub off speed in the soft stuff. Coming up on the corner where Jimmy Kite tried to pass Cullinan last year on the inside. Got into the rough stuff. Just over the bar. Coming up on the super high speed sandy turn. More than a few riders have stacked it into the bales here at over 40 miles an hour. We're approaching the jump. We set up to hit it straight and suck it up as we go over it to get our wheels back on the ground so we can accelerate. The final kick at the bottom of the course. It levels out so we'll be mashing the pedals to set up for the final turn. Dive inside, make the pass, pick the right gear, and sprint through the finish, a winner. The men's Elite Eight in the first pair, Englishman Jason McCroy against Walker. Toby Henderson and young Mike King make up the second pair. Earthquake Jake Watson returns against BMXer Brian Lopes, and Germany's Jurgen Benka draws Miles Rockwell. Cold, bleak, and windy at the top of the mountain, the first heat is set between Jason McCroy and Todd Walker. McCroy closest to the camera right here. Out of the starting gate they go, and McCroy pulls his foot out of the pedals there, but quickly recovers. Walker moves into the lead. McCroy is using that draft to pull up on him, and he slingshots by him right before the first turn. Jason McCroy out in front now. Todd Walker trying to pick up the draft as McCroy looks very smooth, and indeed, Walker pedals right back up to him using that draft. The headwind favors the guy in the back. Look at this, though. McCroy getting a little wild in the turn. It's soft up there, and dab, dab, down he goes. Oh, he gets sideways and goes down, but he's making a quick recovery here, and we know he's a strong peddler. Jason McCroy, indeed, pedals back up to Todd Walker and regains his advantage here. He makes a pass just before the jump. He comes by, and now he's got that strength. He may be able to pedal away through the final straight. Indeed, Jason McCroy pedaled off. Walker having some problems up there. Too close to the finish to catch back up. And in the second run, Todd Walker, with nearly a six-second disadvantage, has to go hard and fast, but it was not to be. Jason McCroy got up and won both rides. I think where my strength is probably in the flat sections, the pedaling sections. I'm really, really able to turn biggish gears. And um, the corners, I can hold my own against the others, I think. England's top downhiller goes to the final four. Henderson and King. Next Watson pair, Toby and Henderson and young Mike King shake hands coming out of the warming hut, and things are going to heat up as they get ready to go off the start ramp. Henderson on the right. Henderson puts a gap on him in the turns on the upper part of the course. King can't take advantage of the draft, and Toby never looks back. Toby Henderson with a big lead on the first ride can afford to take it easy. In fact, he took advantage of a problem. Uh, well, I beat Mike by five seconds the first run, so I just played it smart and followed him all the way down the hill. He looked back, he knew I was playing cat and mouse with him, so he followed me. He lost his chain right at the bottom, so I went around him and just came on in. Tough for him, good for you. Yeah. Well, you got a helicopter waiting like everybody yeah, else. Yeah, that's why I'm here for the helicopter ride. Woo! Henderson joins McCroy in the semis. It's getting slippery. Lines are changing. Um, definitely got to watch how far hard you push it, because I'm definitely just going like on the edge of like a cliff. You said seven minutes. Where's the bike? It's up here. You know it. BMXer Brian Lopes making his Eliminator debut against last year's third place finisher Earthquake Jake Watson, the big guy. Look at the size difference between these two. Jake's got the weight advantage. Gravity is on his side, and he uses it to get down the steep sections. Earthquake Jake goes out to an early lead into a headwind, however, by